So here's what's going on. ChatGPT just dropped its biggest update yet, GPT-5, and it was supposed to be a massive leap forward in AI. Most people expected this to be smarter, faster, maybe even the start of AGI. And for a while, the hype was unreal. Sam Altman, OpenAI's CEO, even teased the launch with a picture of the Death Star on X. Yeah, that's the level of expectation we're talking about. But within days of release, the internet flipped. Reddit threads started blowing up. Users were saying the new model felt dumber more robotic, and straight up less helpful than before. The top post in r slash GPT at the time, titled, GPT-5 is a mess, with thousands of upvotes. And it wasn't just Reddit. Posts on Hacker News, X, and even OpenAI's forum showed the same thing, frustration. So, what happened? OpenAI rolled out GPT-5 quietly. No toggle, no side-by-side -side option. They just made it the new default model inside ChatGPT+. And for most users, that meant GPT-4.0, the model that people actually loved, was suddenly gone. No warning, just replaced. Right away, people started noticing differences. Responses were shorter. The tone, cold, less natural. It stopped asking clarifying questions. It would forget context halfway through a conversation. One Reddit user said it felt like talking to a glorified FAQ bot. Another called it lobotomized. The vibe? It just felt off. The weird part is, on paper, GPT-5 is more advanced. It scored higher than GPT-4 and GPT-4.0 on most benchmarks, including MMLU and coding tasks. OpenAI said it's better at reasoning, summarizing, and handling complex workflows. But the problem wasn't in the numbers. It was in the experience. Turns out, there was a reason for that. Right after launch, OpenAI's smart model router, basically the thing that's supposed to balance speed and intelligence behind the scenes, had a glitch. Sam Altman later confirmed on X that the router failed and forced GPT-5 to only use its fast mode. That's the quicker, but much shallower version. So users were getting this watered-down experience without knowing why, and they weren't imagining it. But that wasn't the only issue. OpenAI also introduced a usage limit, 200 messages per week for GPT-5 thinking mode. So even if you wanted to access the deeper, smarter version of the model, you'd hit a cap. And this wasn't just for free users. This affected paid users on ChatGPT+. One minute you're using ChatGPT for work, then boom, you've hit your weekly limit. People were taking screenshots of the warning and posted them with captions like, So, what exactly am I paying for again? This all snowballed fast. Within a week, OpenAI started walking things back. They restored GPT-4.0 for Plus users, promised to increase the message cap, and said they'd give advance notice before removing any models in the future. But the damage had already been done. GPT-5's rollout made headlines in the Wall Street Journal, Wired, and Business Insider. WSJ called it a rocky release that raised questions about OpenAI's direction. Wired noted how OpenAI had to reverse decisions in real time, mid-backlash, just to keep users from leaving. And Business Insider reported on the growing sentiment that GPT-5's personality just didn't feel human anymore. And that's the part that stung most. Because people weren't just complaining about bugs, they were saying the magic was gone. The sense that you were talking to something more. Something that could understand tone, nuance, and feeling. That connection? It felt like it vanished overnight. And even with higher test scores and faster speeds, users weren't sticking around just for stats. They wanted the experience back. And here's the thing. This all happened within days of launch. And just when it couldn't get messier, another problem surfaced. Hallucinations. Despite scoring higher on benchmarks, GPT-5 was reportedly hallucinating more than GPT-4.0. Users started documenting it, misquoting facts, fabricating citations, making up URLs. It would sometimes even contradict its own answers mid-thread. One user described it as more confident, but less accurate. Another said, it sounds smarter, but it makes more mistakes. Now, these weren't isolated bugs. According to multiple community reports, this was happening across use cases, coding, legal summaries, even basic research prompts. In a side-by-side -side test posted on Hacker News, GPT-4.0 actually gave a more grounded, fact-checked response than GPT-5, which, again, left people wondering. 
Why did OpenAI push GPT-5 front and center when it clearly wasn't ready for prime time? But it wasn't just the outputs. There was something else people couldn't ignore. The tone. With GPT-4.0, the interaction felt fluid, friendly, sometimes even too friendly, but still human-like. GPT-5, it dropped all that. The tone became sterile, like you were speaking to a corporate manual. Gone were the thoughtful follow-ups, the gentle nudges, the little bits of personality that made previous versions feel conversational. A post from Business Insider summarized it best. GPT-5 feels colder, like it's been stripped of empathy. The shift didn't happen by accident. OpenAI later admitted that GPT-5 was deliberately trained to be more neutral in tone, possibly in response to complaints about GPT-4.0 being overly enthusiastic or clingy. But in doing that, it lost what many users actually valued, emotional intelligence. That ability to feel like the model was with you in a conversation, not just processing input and spitting out answers. And if all of that wasn't enough, there were safety concerns too. Within 24 hours of release, jailbreakers had already found ways to bypass GPT-5's safety filters. One prompt reportedly tricked it into giving instructions on how to make explosives. Others involved misinformation hate speech or impersonation. The Verge and Wired both reported on how quickly GPT-5's filters were being exploited and how it seemed even easier to bypass than GPT-4.0. And here's the twist. This version of the model was supposed to be safer. OpenAI had claimed that GPT-5 came with enhanced safety alignment and better content moderation tools. But within a day, that narrative crumbled. Prompt engineers and researchers on X started posting proof that GPT-5 was more vulnerable, not less. So now you had a model that felt colder, hallucinated more, imposed usage limits, and on top of that, had weaker safety guardrails than the version it replaced. It started to feel like a lose-lose situation. But what really pushed the backlash into mainstream headlines was the fact that OpenAI made all these changes without warning. No roadmap, no opt-out, no rollback button, just a major shift pushed onto millions of users overnight. And it caught everyone, from developers to casual users, completely off guard. And that sudden shift triggered something deeper. It wasn't just about AI performance anymore. It was about trust. People who relied on GPT-4.0 for work, research, therapy simulations, education, suddenly felt like they lost something important. Not because GPT-5 was terrible, but because the decision was made for them. The model changed, the vibe changed, and nobody was asked. The Wall Street Journal covered it as a rocky rollout that highlighted growing tension between OpenAI and its user base. Wired described it as a lesson in how even the most advanced AI models can backfire when users feel ignored. And TechRadar reported that OpenAI's forums were flooded with complaints from paid subscribers demanding refunds, citing degraded performance and unclear communication. And then there's the the impact on developers. Anyone using OpenAI API for their apps, services, or businesses noticed shifts too. Some said outputs were slower and less consistent. Others had to reimagine prompts because the newer model handled instructions differently. For solo developers and small teams, these subtle shifts in behavior were expensive and frustrating. So OpenAI responded. First, they brought GPT-4.0 back as a selectable option inside ChatGPT+. Then they promised to raise message caps on GPT-5's thinking mode. Sam Altman publicly acknowledged the rollout's flaws, calling the router outage unfortunate and promising better transparency going forward. They also started testing new settings, letting users choose between fast, auto, and thinking modes. The goal was to give people more control over how the model behaves, without removing capabilities behind the scenes. A silent rollout was no longer an option. OpenAI also admitted that more human-like personalities may return. Not the overly friendly kind that annoyed some users, but something warmer than GPT-5's current tone. In an interview with Business Insider, the company confirmed they're experimenting with different conversational styles, trying to strike a balance between professionalism and relatability. At the same time, researchers began calling for emotional intelligence benchmarks in future AI evaluations. Because technical scores like MMLU or Human Eval don't account for how a model feels to use. And clearly, 
that feeling matters. But by then, the damage was done. The GPT-5 rollout had been a case study in what happens when hype outpaces delivery and when technical progress ignores user experience. Even now, forums are divided. Some users have switched back to GPT-4.0 and refuse to touch GPT-5. Others are given it time hoping OpenAI can improve the tone, consistency, and depth over time. But almost everyone agrees, this launch could have been handled differently. And there's a bigger takeaway here. AI isn't just code anymore. For millions, it's a daily productivity tool, a research partner, even a creative collaborator. So when a major update hits, and it feels like something's being taken away, it's personal. People don't want just smarter AI. They want stable, reliable, familiar AI. Something they can trust, use, and build around. GPT-5 may still evolve. OpenAI has the infrastructure, the feedback, and clearly plenty of pressure. But this rollout reminded everyone of one thing. When you're building tech that millions rely on every day, progress alone isn't enough. You also have to listen. And for a company leading the race in artificial intelligence, that might just be the most important upgrade of all. If you made it this far, let us know what you think in the comment section below. For more interesting topics, make sure you watch the recommended video that you see on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.